My name is Nathan Salzberg. I'm the curator of the Alan Lomax Archive. Um, I'm also a musician and uh, a writer, and uh, I'm a vaguely serious record collector. We're so lucky to be in this era of collectors who take their collections seriously as curations, you know, as, as, as bodies of work that are worthy of preserving and not just for hoarding, say. The mission of Lomax's career entirely, I would say, well, first and foremost was the documentation of traditional music around the world, but also sort of, and the preservation of it, but also the promotion of it. Our the official name of our organization is the Association for Cultural Equity. And you know, for us, our mission is access. We do a lot of work sort of disseminating our audio and video and photo collections to the places the stuff came from, working with regional archives and libraries and universities and things. Um, and of course, we had this huge YouTube channel. We just passed like six million views recently, which is kind of wild. I mean, Lomax would have been thrilled by that stuff, thrilled by it. To me, that's the idea. I mean, you can't denigrate digital media when it can provide this level of access. The problem for me, I and mean, the problem for Lomax would have been that it's hard to keep the stuff in its context. It's hard to present it in its context. I think that's why the reissue boom is, when it's good, is great, because a lot of people are, as I said, going and doing the work. Because when you see a bad reissue, it's just a record that's been reissued, and there's no sort of further contextualization, which I think is, that's sort of the point, in a way. I mean, granted, I mean, the music should, should affect you first. This is one of my favorite acoustic guitar records, Peter Lang's The Thing at the Nursery Room Window. I'm not exactly sure when it came out, maybe 1970, on Fahey's label, Tacoma. I just think it's from start to finish, it's just, um, it's so good. He was such a phenomenal guitar player, but it was never, um, his virtuosity was never, um, never compromised how good the songs were. Um, so this is one of these records that Lemax had pressed for him specially uh, from the Metal Play Masters that Decca had from the Brunswick and Vocalion catalogs. And this is Will Bennett's Railroad Bill. Will Bennett was from Loudoun, Tennessee, black guitar player who came to the um, St. James Hotel in Knoxville in 1929, uh, I think, and cut this version of Railroad Bill and also a song called the uh, Real Estate Blues. You can see, I think it says OK, I think that's, it says AL, Lomax's initials there. This is a record from the collection of this fellow Don Wall here in town, the guy who uh, hoarded 78s and later LPs and died. Albert Kane, apparently he was a, a cobbler in Georgia. It's a, it's a high number okay, which makes it rare. Um, it's in really nice shape. And I just sort of figured it wasn't gonna be really that great. Um, just the era, 1931, it says vocal and guitar which made me think that maybe there was going to be a yodel involved, um, which I can't bear. But I put this on and uh, it completely blew my mind. Not only because it's a good song and the guy's a good singer of it, great text, funny song, both these songs are, are good, um, but the guy is a monster guitar player. He is an absolute monster. I want to play you something now that's kind of, we didn't discuss, hasn't really been part of our conversation. Just a record that I really, really love, and um, never seen another copy of it. And uh, I don't play you this because it's rare. I play you this because it is sublime. So this is from this record. I mean, it's the most breathtakingly beautiful cover um, of uh, music from the Marquis Isles and uh, the Tuamotu Atoll. I just love looking at that cover. It's, it's the music and the uh, the artwork sort of provide some solace. It's just one of the most beautiful songs I've ever heard in my life, and I really, really treasure this record. So, I mentioned this earlier, but uh, E.C. Ball was a guitar player from Rugby, Virginia, down southwest part of the state. And this is him and Orna, his wife, doing this song called One Day I Will. I am the Lomax is recorded him first in 1941 in, um, in Rugby, and then Lomax went back to him in 59, uh, recorded him in stereo. He only did like four or five songs with them, which was a shame. But uh, Rounder uh, caught up with him in the 1970s and put out a couple records of, of his. But um, this, is my, uh, this is my favorite one. And his guitar style is so, so killer. It's, um, 
He even said that he was trying to do something different. I forget the exact quote. He had a really wonderful quote about, you know, people did things their way and I just wanted to do something a little bit different. And he did. There's something kind of funny and atavistic about a record collection. For me, at least looking around this room, because there are records all around the room and there's these things, which are even more atavistic, uh, CDs over there. But if you, right over here, which we can look at in a minute, there are, um, four hard drives, which are more or less the complete Alan Lomax archive from 1946 to 1991. Uh, and that's, you know, 17,000 audio files and 5,000 photographs and 300 hours of video, um, all in those four little hard drives. And in a way, I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know what to say. That juxtaposition is kind of wild sometimes. I will say that, you know, each record has far more utility to me looking at it on the wall than a single sort of tape as translated into ones and zeros in those drives. Also, let it be said, those four hard drives are how I pay my mortgage and not the records on the shelves. So. <laughs>